Hello everyone, welcome back to Parently. Dr. Boyd here. Today we're going to talk about short cervix. What does short cervix mean? So we have to understand anatomy and math. I know that's a scary subject for a lot of you when I talk about math, but it's numbers. So this is our uterus. Inside our uterus is a baby. And again, I love to show the baby that we've got in here because it's so different, for lack of a better term. So our baby is this guy. This is my grandson's. It's a blue baby. Sometimes we talk about Smurfs. You don't want to deliver a Smurf. Anyway, ridiculous humor, I know that. Anyway, your baby's inside your uterus, and the uterus is here, the cervix is down here. The normal cervical length for most women is between four and five centimeters of length. I know I'm using the word centimeters. Why can't we just use inches? We're in the United States, but in medicine, we always use the metric system. So four to five centimeters is this long. So that's about two inches in length. A short cervix is anything less than that. Now every provider has different examples of how they define short cervix. Most people though, most doctors, most providers define short cervix as anything less than 2.5 centimeters before your 36th week. So what do you do if you're in your office, the provider checks you either with their digital finger or they measure you by ultrasound and they say that your cervix is short. What is the process at that point? Usually three different things are going to happen. First of all, it has to be done in a measurement form with an ultrasound. If someone checks your cervix and they say it's short and they've just examined you with their finger, that is not good medicine. You have to have good objective data. So it'll be an internal sonogram. I know for women that's terrible. It's the, it's the device, the ultrasound device that looks like a long rod and it goes in the vagina and it measures the cervical length. And again, we want a normal cervical length to be about four centimeters. So today we're talking about short cervix, 2.5 centimeters or less. You're less than 36 weeks. What will your provider talk to you about? The most common medical treatment for short cervix is simple evaluation, simple observation. So they say, Mrs. Smith, you have a short cervix. This could lead to preterm delivery, which has its problems. Everybody knows we want to get to full term with our babies. So you could end up in a preterm situation. We want to prevent that. So he, will tell, he or she will tell you, you need to have bed rest. Now, what does that mean? That doesn't mean you go home and you get in your bed and you stay there for weeks and weeks and weeks. It simply means that you're down, the weight is taken off of your cervix because again, think about gravity. When you're standing here, things want to fall toward the ground. So if you're down like this, either in a chair or on the couch, the weight is taken off your cervix. Theoretically, this decreases the risk that the cervix could shorten even more or that cervix could start to open. So it's, it's a modified bed rest program. So if you're up 16 hours a day, normally you sleep eight hours, you're up 16 hours a day, we as providers would say, hey, maybe cut that in half and try to be down off of your feet four to six, four to eight hours per day. Now that's very difficult if you work, so how do you do that? That's a very difficult subject and that's why family is important. Pelvic rest. So you go home and tell your husband, honey, I've got a short cervix, we can't have any more sex. Most husbands are pretty disgruntled about that. However, it's important because semen has prostaglandin in the semen. Theoretically, that can make your uterus contract that potentially could make your cervix shorten even more or open up. The other issue is potentially, if you have intercourse, you could increase the risk for infection and that may make your cervix also open up. So a modified bed rest program with pelvic rest is the most common way that we treat women with short cervixes. Then you're seeing the, the healthcare provider, your doctor, on a frequent basis. Some, for example, in my practice, we measure the cervix every week. 
So if we diagnose the short cervix at 22 weeks, you see me at 23, 24, 25. Now, if it stays exactly the same and you've gone three to four to five weeks, I usually extended that out two weeks, and then I would continue cervical evaluation usually up until about the 34th week. If your cervix never changed after 34 weeks or so, then I would discontinue doing the cervical exams by ultrasound. Now, the next option, if your healthcare provider is very concerned that you're going to deliver early, they may talk to you at this point about a cervical cap pessary. Now, in my practice, I did not use them. It's well discussed in the literature. And basically what it is, it's a cap that goes on the cervix and it pushes up on the baby, so to speak, and kind of takes pressure off of the cervix. Most women don't like it because it stays in your vagina and it tends to increase your risk for infection because all of that cervical mucus stays in the cap and, and, and potentially increases your risk for infection. Most women do not like that as an option, but it's a non-invasive way that prevents you from going to surgery, which is the third option. If your cervix continues to shorten, and now your cervix is now at two centimeters, 1.5 centimeters, one centimeter, your healthcare provider may recommend that you undergo a cervical cerclage placement. We talk about this in another video, but it's a surgery, it's an invasive procedure. But at that point, your physician is concerned about you delivering early, and we know that if your cervix can be stitched, potentially we can prevent that baby from delivering early. Now, I'm sure you heard my great eye watch dinging throughout the video, I'm sorry, but it's one of those technical things that we all experience in today's world. Try to take that off next time. This is a very important subject. It's important to understand that most women that have short cervixes go all the way until their due date, and then we look back and say, well, that was a lot to do about nothing. But as a healthcare provider, if I identify a short cervix, I can't just say to you, I don't think we have anything to worry about, even though your cervix is half of what it normally is, see me back in a month. Most physicians don't operate that way. We get nervous, as should you, and you should be evaluated closely. I hope this was helpful today. We'll see you next time.